You've been served. Have a nice day. Lawsuits are normally nothing to laugh at. Normally. With that in mind, here are 10 hilarious lawsuits against food brands that deserve a few giggles. Pepsi, where's my jet? We fly together, we die together. Most of the big brands are no strangers to clever marketing. After all, if you want your brand to be known worldwide, you're going to have to up the ante just to compete. Pepsi is well aware of this fact and has been pumping out creative ads and marketing strategies for years. However, deciding to give away a jet was definitely creative, but not such a good idea. Back in 1996, Pepsi debuted Pepsi Stuff, which was a rewards program that allowed fans to collect Pepsi points. These points could then be redeemed for lots of cool merch or Pepsi Stuff from the Pepsi Stuff catalog. Among the prizes were items like Pepsi t-shirts, hats, and a Harrier jet. Now, it must be stated that to walk away with a simple Pepsi t-shirt, you would have to drink a lot of Pepsi. But the Harrier would set you back a mere $7 million in Pepsi points. However, Pepsi's attempt at a joke backfired when a man by the name of John Leonard said to himself, challenge accepted, and with a little glance at the fine print of the promotion, found out that in place of product labels, customers could simply buy Pepsi points for 10 cents each. With a financial backer, Leonard then circumvented the impossible task of collecting $7 million in Pepsi points. When Leonard came looking for his jet, Pepsi was forced to inform the man that there was no jet and this promotion was clearly a joke. So Leonard took the soda brand to court. Unfortunately for Mr. Leonard, the court ruled in Pepsi's favor. If you want the whole story, check out Netflix's documentary called Pepsi Where's My Jet. And it's the choice of a new generation. Velveeta Prep Time. Whoa, is that a grilled cheese deluxe from Cheezer? We've all heard the old expression, time is money, at some point in our lives. Well, in the case of a certain Florida citizen, time was worth approximately $5 million. Amanda Ramirez, a Florida resident and Velveeta aficionado, filed a class action lawsuit against Kraft Heinz in November 2022. Ramirez claimed that the company's Velveeta shells and cheese takes longer to prepare than the three and a half minutes advertised on the box. The lawsuit argues that the advertised prep time only covers the microwaving stage of the product, and other actions like opening the box and mixing the water and cheese sauce are not factored in. I wouldn't be happy either. The 15-page class action lawsuit alleges that parent company Kraft Heinz sells more of the product and at a higher price than it would if it didn't mislead consumers about the pasta's prep time. She wouldn't have bought it had she known the truth. Ramirez's legal team is looking for $5 million in damages. Of course, Kraft Heinz made a statement claiming the lawsuit to be frivolous and that they would strongly defend against the allegations in the complaint. Time will tell if this lawsuit results in any changes to the prep time listed on the package. Of course, I've eaten chunks of cheese before, just not in public. Strawberry Pop-Tarts we have Pop-Tarts. Of all the various delicious breakfast options you had as a kid, Pop-Tarts were among the most fun. Not only were they a hot breakfast that you could prepare by yourself, they were also too good to just be eaten at breakfast. Those sweet, crisp pastries had a charm about them that never really went away for most of us, and the fruity filling inside was always the best part. By far, the most popular of the fruit-flavored Pop-Tarts was and is strawberry. However, multiple lawsuits filed against the product claim that it's not just strawberries you're tasting. These lawsuits were filed against cereal giant Kellogg's, the company that produces Pop-Tarts, for filling the beloved strawberry toaster pastries with other fruit, primarily apples and pears. The lawsuit further adds that the apples and pears that are added along with the strawberries are inferior in terms of health benefits. However, a U.S. district judge wrote in the case's ruling that no reasonable consumer would see the entire product label reading the words frosted strawberry Pop-Tarts next to a picture of a toaster pastry coated in frosting and reasonably expect that fresh strawberries would be the sole ingredient in the product. In April of last year, the judge officially dismissed one of the multiple cases against Kelly for this very reason. So the next time you're interested in getting the full nutritional value from a strawberry, perhaps go grab a handful of the real thing. Did you bring me strawberries? First time here? Well, you don't need a lawyer to hit that subscribe button. It's easy and it's free. Now, more lawsuit laughs. I object, Your Honor, and I move to strike! Texas Pete Hot Sauce. Those are the hottest peppers on the planet! 
False advertising can have various consequences. After all, when information is presented to the consumer, it's fair to assume that the information is accurate. Unfortunately, this isn't always the case, and a bit of truth bending can lead to corporations finding themselves knee deep in legal trouble. This was the case for Texas Pete Hot Sauce in 2022. Texas Pete Hot Sauce is a brand of fiery sauce that is quickly approaching its 100th year of scorching mouths. The hot sauce proudly displays a fire engine red cowboy complete with lasso and a lone star floating about its logo. So what's the problem? You see, Texas Pete Hot Sauce claims to be a product of, well, you guessed it, Texas. After all, it's right there in the name, right? Well, not exactly, as the sauce is actually made in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Close, but not quite Texas, is it? And you think this is a good idea? Philip White noticed this bit of false advertising and saw fit to file a class action lawsuit against the brand. White claims that he wouldn't have purchased the sauce had he known that the product was not made in Texas. Despite these claims, Texas Pete's website does state that the sauce is and always has been produced in North Carolina. Ever heard the saying that everything is bigger in Texas? Well, that seemingly includes illegal problems, too. Inedible Skittles When she sat on a rainbow, she made Skittles. Doesn't just opening a bag of Skittles put a smile on your face? With all the colors of the rainbow represented and ready to send your taste buds on a journey to sweet and fruity flavor country, Skittles are chewy, sweet fun. Well, unless those Skittles are inedible, of course. Back in July 2022, a class action lawsuit was filed against Mars Inc., Skittles' parent company, for knowingly deceiving customers by not disclosing that the candy contains a chemical called titanium oxide and thus is not suitable for human consumption. Titanium oxide is added to the candy to give them their bright color. The suit further adds that the client would not have purchased the candy if the information regarding the titanium oxide had been fully disclosed. According to the suit, the client suffered economic injury by purchasing them. Ultimately, the case was dismissed, and the FDA sees no problem with the chemical additive. We're not sure when the court date for the next trial for Skittles will be. You know, the one where people are suing Skittles for claiming that you can't actually taste the rainbow. Are you guilty or not guilty, sir? Canada Dry Ginger Ale you take my ginger ale? You What's the first ingredient you'd expect to taste after taking a sip of Canada Dry Ginger Ale? If your answer was ginger, then you're more fortunate than a Canadian man by the name of Victor Cardoso. According to the man himself, Victor and his family often drank the popular soft drink for the health properties associated with ginger. However, Cardoso said that he and his family were unable to taste any ginger at all. So Mr. Cardoso did what most of us would do. He sued the company. It's too late to win. Victor's lawyer argued that despite the brand's label saying that the drink was made with real ginger, the label was misleading. Cardoso's lawyer would continue to argue that while Canada Dry does use actual ginger, they boil it in ethanol, and that essentially destroys any nutritional or medicinal benefits. The litigation went on for 20 months before a $200,000 settlement was finally reached. However, Canada Dry released a statement expressly denying liability and is not required to change its product labeling or advertising for products marketed in Canada. Who knew that a supposed flavorless can of someone's favorite soft drink would end up paying off? Barilla Pasta Pucci, he says that he wants a two spaghetti a speciale. Real Italian pasta is thought to be the best pasta the world has to offer. That's fair. So when a pasta company claims to be Italy's number one brand of pasta, you can bet pasta lovers might be willing to pay a little extra for the stuff. That is, of course, if the pasta is truly what it claims to be. Barilla Pasta came under fire from customers for falsely advertising that their product was Italy's best pasta. A class action lawsuit was filed against the pasta company for the misleading marketing in October of 2022. While Barilla was founded in Parma, Italy in 1877, and the company is still headquartered there today, the pasta is produced in the U.S. of A. A spokesperson responded to the allegations detailed in the case, stating that the company will continue to defend itself against the unfounded claims, as the wording on the box clearly states that the pasta is made in the U.S.A., with both American and imported ingredients. To play it safe, maybe the next round of Barilla pasta packages should read, made in the U.S.A. with U.S.A. ingredients, but founded in and at one time made in Italy. Though all that might not fit on the package. It's plain pasta. It's the only meal that never disappoints. McNuggets burn. 
Hey, Mr. Nugget, you the bomb. What is it about hot food and McDonald's? In the past, the burger chain hasn't had the best of luck when it comes to their hot products and customers injuring themselves with those products. In 2019, a Florida child suffered second-degree burns after a McNugget from her Happy Meal landed on her side. The four-year-old was left in severe pain, and her mother said McDonald's was responsible for the injury. What? But you're so good at hiding your emotions. The Florida mother filed a lawsuit against the mega chain, stating the franchise should be held liable for negligence negligence and failure to warn customers about the risk of hot food, and for failing to provide instructions for safe handling of the food. The burger chain was not found to be negligent, and the jury dismissed the argument that the product was defective. While there's nothing funny about a child suffering second-degree burns, most parents tend to fully realize that anything fresh out of the fryer is likely going to be a bit on the hot side. Blue Diamond Smokehouse Almonds I used to be able to name every nut. While almonds on their own might not be the first snack you reach for after opening up your cupboard, combining the nuts with something like chocolate or jalapeno seasoning brings these healthy snacks to another level. Blue Diamond knows this all too well, which is why the company offers a deliciously smoky version of the nut, the Smokehouse Almond. Just one problem, how can these almonds be called Smokehouse when they've never been in a smokehouse? This was the question asked by a Chicago woman in 2022. Margot Clark discovered this fact about the Blue Diamond almonds and took it upon herself to file a label class lawsuit against the company. Margot insisted that since the almonds were not produced using real smoke and instead simply include a natural hickory smoke flavor, they're not the real deal and thus not worthy of the name. Among other things, the class action suit alleges that the company is misleading consumers and that Blue Diamond is violating federal and state regulations. The suit further adds that the brand should make it clear on the front of the package that the smokehouse flavor is artificial and that the brand's red and orange packaging are evocative of fire. It's not known whether Blue Diamond will have to pay up and change the word smokehouse or not. And I'm a nut nut. Duncan's Hot Coffee be the worst coffee I've ever tasted. Most of us expect the coffee we order to be hot. Makes sense, right? However, not all who purchase a cup of coffee seem to be aware of this fact. In 2022, a New Jersey couple, Evan Arlington and Stephanie Arlington Macias, filed a lawsuit against the donut giant after Arlington spilled a cup of coffee on his lap at a drive through The lawsuit states that as a result, Arlington suffered severe burns and great pain and mental anguish, affecting his future. The suit further adds that Arlington's wife Wife suffered a loss of her husband's aid, comfort, conjugal fellowship, and consortium. Fortunately for Duncan, these lawsuits usually don't go anywhere, and with warning labels on cups, these suits tend to disappear pretty quickly. Unfortunately for those who continue to spill hot coffee on themselves, maybe it's time to play it safe and brew up a pot of coffee in the safety of your home. You want to know what made me the person I am? Then put me on the stand! We're serving up more great videos. Just tap or click, hit that subscribe button, and ring that bell to join our notification squad.